Washington Watch with Roland Martin is powered by HP. All right, folks, welcome back, back to our panel. And I want to pick up on that. Seriously, where in the world is Congress? You would think that when you have a difficult time, the president comes out, says, look, pass my uh, construction uh, jobs bill. Congress is kicking back, chilling at the crib. Well, you know, um, the Democratic leaders, both at the beginning of this week, called on the Republican leadership to cancel our recess. We're going on recess for the next 12 days. The Republican leadership has not responded. How many days y'all work this month, I mean, month of May? <laughs> in the month of May, we were in session nine days. Nine days? Yes, yes, yes. But look at it from the Republicans' point that of view. That sounds like Cornell wait, wars, wait. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's got better health care. Wait. <laughs> I don't know about that. But think about it from their point of view. Eighty-seven new Republicans were elected in January of last year. They want those folks to continue to be reelected, so they want them to go home and campaign. Now, That's the reason. I, I think the Democrats should, st uh, y'all should occupy Congress. <laughs> oh, there you go. I think that's a yeah, great idea. Y'all should just come to Congress. All right, we're here. <laughs> Where y'all at? Now you, now, you know that that was tried in December on the extension of unemployment, and they wouldn't turn the microphones on. No, so you don't need the microphone. Get, look, y'all need to go old school black <laughs> activists. Get a bull horn. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> see, see, y'all forgot y'all roots. Get the Congress on. We ain't getting the bullhorn. <laughs> Not getting the bullhorn. All right. Okay. Understand. Understand. No sweat. Uh, one of the other things that uh, has jumped out uh, this week uh, is this whole issue of the Supreme Court and health care. Right. And here's what's interesting. Uh, the CNN poll said that most people want health care repeal. But the interesting part is a significant number of people want the health care law repeal because they felt it didn't go far enough. Yeah. It's amazing how that never really gets told. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's problem. It's problematic. And, and quite frankly, Democrats should take uh, some some heat on this because, quite frankly, we did not do a, ver a very I good agree. job of messaging around this. No, really? Really? Shocker. And the Congresswoman, were, I mean, they worked very hard to sort of move this historic, historic measure, but it's lost. And when you talk to voters, and particularly in African Americans, no more, no voter is more anxious about health care than African Americans, and, and they're still anxious about it. They have no idea what this health care law is, ha, is done. They're hopeful, but they have no clue about what this health care law right. do, and, does. You know, and it was actually before my time. I was sitting in California watching this. But if you think about some of the provisions such as pre-existing conditions, I mean, those provisions save people's lives. The fact that today a 26-year-old can continue on their parents' plan, you know, this is things that absolutely mm -hmm. save people's lives. I don't think that the Democrats did a great job in marketing. <laughs> and they still are been, doing a great job in communicating. Right. Right. I mean, my God. <laughs> Those are great things, but two things came out of it. Number one, tone and messaging. The Democrats made it seem as though it was going to be a rushed process, and people felt uncomfortable with that, first and foremost. Uh, the a other rushed process that took a whole year. Well, look at, look at how they had to, they had to, they had to yeah. win over the blue dogs, and they had to do this, and there was special type of votes in Congress, and that was something that the average American, whether they were conservative or progressive, felt a little uneasy about. The other thing about this is the focus has not been on those 26-year-olds. It's not been on pre-existing conditions. Those are things that people... It's been on the 30 million been, people that, right, it's that It's been on covered. the individual mandate, and when you yeah. don't mess properly... That's thing Romney loved in Massachusetts. Right, yes, exactly. Yes, but the Tea Party never did, and yeah. so that's the group that if we look at how politics have played out 2009, 2010, those are the folks that dominated that cycle. Yeah. And therefore, they dominated the I, message. I, and that's where you got to where I, we I are right now. I got to ask the question. Now, we heard all of, we saw all of these stories and people were talking about how the president is such a great communicator. How in the world, Chris, have the Democrats consistently fumbled messaging? I mean, they have gotten beat to the punch on nearly every issue. And I'm sitting here going... Can y'all find somebody who knows how to communicate? Well, a couple of things. One, they always want you to... You know I'm not lying, Cornell. It's been pretty <laughs> that's, bad. That's not fair. The messaging that's, has been weak. That's yeah. Well, fair. one, okay, they, right, they always right. want to have the president out front as if he is the only person in the White House who can say anything. So that's number one. Uh, number two, in terms of the, uh, in terms of conservatives and in terms of Republicans, look, you can agree or disagree with us, but we're very clear that we have an ideology. We're going to make that ideology clear. We're going to stick to that, and we're not going to get caught up in all of these other distractions. And for me, that's the issue with, with the Democrats. It's particularly. pretty easy when your ideology is no. 
No, well, well, no, no, no raising that, taxes, no, 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 no that, government. That's not the ideology, but at least it's an ideology. Re regardless of whether you agree with it or not, mm -hmm. it is clear, and we are going to consistently stick to that message. With the Democrats, it's, and particularly as it related to, the, to that whole health care thing, I was like, what are y'all talking about? Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing. Well, well here's, well, yeah, you do, you do stick to messaging, and here's part of the problem, and, and it's really interesting, the guy who I think you should have nominated this year, who probably couldn't have been it, Jeb Bush, was, was out sort of talking about your message today, talk, and they talk about sort of a surrogate being off message. And what Jeb Bush was basically saying is that the extremism of the, of the Republican Party is being short sighted. And he sees it in their policies and the whole conversation that's going on in the Republican Party. And this is a Bush, this is Jeb Bush of Florida talking about the extremism of, of what he sees in the Republican Party right and now being short sighted. That's not off message, that's no. prophecy. The Republicans exactly. can't <laughs> win. There you go. There you they go. Can't win. They, they can't prophecy. win in 10 years if we continue to do what we do. There you go. So that's what that boiled down to. I get Lenny's new name is Negro Dollars. <laughs> <laughs>